Okay, good evening. I thought I'm going to make one more video. Um, we're probably going to get a cold start video this weekend. It's going to get really cold here. I would say probably somewhere between minus 5C to minus 15C, somewhere around there, 0 degree Fahrenheit to 20 degree Fahrenheit in that range. This was my first 126 I had in 1996 i bought it it was six years old 35,000 miles and that was about three or four months after i had bought it 420 scl it was either an 89 or 90 can't remember it was the gray with the black leather seats and my ex-wife in the picture we took that picture at the kansas city zoo parking lot with my mother taking the picture while she was visiting from germany just thought I'd throw this in. So I had several of them. I had them since they were very new. 35,000 miles, five, six years old is really nothing. And I paid good money for it. So um, I got a little bit experience of what these cars were supposed to be able to do and what they're doing and what they're not doing. So I got a good feeling for this. The first thing I want to touch real quick is the Idle control valve, which I had shown you, I had bought three versions, the Mercedes-Benz one for 600, a gray market one for 200, 250, and then the Chinese made one for 35 bucks with the free shipping. And it is the gray market one and the Chinese one we wanted to uh, quickly compare. I actually have the old original Mercedes-Benz one here too, so I got all three of them. We can take a look at this. And when we look, let me see, we can zoom in, yeah. You can see here nicely the plate, oops, sorry. There we go. We got the plate or the movable part and the gap and you can see the flange, the top part is slightly angled. On the Chinese one, you can see that the opening gap is actually smaller than it is on the gray market one and on the Mercedes-Benz one. Let me see if I can move that a little bit better so we can see it, yeah. We can see this now nicely. You can see this, the top part here, this here, on the top here, also is different on the Chinese one. It is cast all the way down and not machined. And this is why this doesn't work. What will happen with the Chinese one, with this one here, is that the idle will go up to your 1500, 1200, or 1000, somewhere around there. And then it's going to drop down, and there's not enough uh, air going through it, and the engine cuts off immediately. You step on the gas, your gas releases, your gas pedal, and you release it. It will go down, and the engine will die out. That's why this doesn't work. That may work on another vehicle, but it will not work on the 420, or on the 560, or on the 380, or on the 500. So that's the three differences. The gray aftermarket one would work or will work or does work. It is just a little bit dirty. I will put this one up for sale probably for 250 for what I paid for it. And it is a good deal because it is uh, totally identical to the Mercedes-Benz one and it will do you just fine. So that is to the uh, idle. Let me see, can I zoom out? There we go now we zoom back out all right now i wanted to show you something else here this here is another blast from the past that is my analog meter and it is the same meter i had bought in in 1990 no 1979 when i was 12 and I, this is not the same, it is the same model, but this is not the same unit. And uh, I wanted to show you this because, uh, as you probably know, this is the airflow potentiometer. And when you remove this here, there's pin one and pin two on the top. And the way we test those is, with, this is what we actually use. These are called Hirschman clamps because they're made by Hirschman and I will put a link into the uh, into this video to eBay buy it now 
listings where you can buy the Hirschman clamps. These here. And this is the five millimeter cable I use with this, which works perfectly if you see it. See this fits right in here. Gives you a nice fit. They come in a set of four or five different colors. It's not very expensive. Neither are the Hirschman ones, so they just plug in like this. They go in. So this is all not that easy. See this? And there it is. Now you have a secure connection. And the neat thing about the Hirschman clamps is they come out and they have these tips. So what you do is you come in from the side and you grab it. You take that connector off and you hook this up. And you put the plus on the center pin. And then you start your car, you, you plug this in first halfway. So you have this way all the way in the back and this one in the front, your connector. And then you set your meter to the 2.5 volt range right here, 2.5. I can actually have this and I can go to my scale to 1.25 here. And we're supposed to be setting this to 0.7, which is right in the middle between here, which is point, uh, six five and uh, so point seven is right in the middle between these two here and that is very easy and i did this and then you open up you take off these two plates and you loosen the four screws just a little bit and then you can move this here while the car is idling until you read exactly 0 0.7 volts that is what you want and you have to make this adjustment Every time you change or make any modifications or repairs or anything on the fuel distributor and you wind up making adjustments to the plate height and the uh, distance between the plunger and that little ball, that little round thing in the back there. Now, the way you usually set this up first, say like you, you do a complete overhaul or you haven't had this thing running in a long, long time. Um, what I would do is you have to, before you do anything, before you can really start the car, if this was dry from, a, you know, from sitting for a long time, or you made, like I said, if you made any type of repairs to it or your changes or what have you, you fixed your fuel system, your fuel pumps, the accumulator, filter, check valves or anything like that. Anytime you work on this system is what I would do is I would loosen all eight lines up lightly. So and then you can do one thing is you jump on the fuel pump in the back here the uh, pin seven and eight i believe those are the ones that is 30 and 87 and i use these cables here the short ones for those i will put a link for them in too just put a put a jumper in it and then what you do is you push this plate down and you will see when it starts to flow out and then you adjust this you without the engine running and this is just while it is sitting there. So you're turning this to the right clockwise until you actually have a flow, a very mild flow uh, of gasoline. And when you have this, you just go back with your hex key a quarter turn and that should turn it off. And that will give you that one to three millimeter play you need. And when you do that, that car should start immediately. So you tighten this and then you probably have to crank three, four seconds, but then the car should fire up in any condition under any uh, temperature. So this way you have your fuel properly adjusted and then you wanna kind of play around with this when the engine is warm, turn it a little bit up. You have to be very careful of quarter turn, eighths of a turn, 16 of a turn will make a modification. Every time you turn this, you have to wait for a couple minutes, push the, Lever down to rev up to a couple thousand, three thousand RPM. Let it come, and let it just sit. Because the EHA valve and the and the ECU and that potentiometer, they need to catch up to you. Change what you just made, and uh, then you can kind of adjust it where the engine starts to go rough when it is rich. Then you go counterclockwise until the engine goes rough. Uh, you know, when it becomes too lean, and then you want to go in the middle between these two positions, between starting to get rough rich, starting to get rough lean, 
in the middle and then you want to be a tad bit below that setting and that is your first calibration setting to recalibrate the system and then what you do is you go here you check on your meter where you are with your voltage that probably has changed and you're gonna see even a small move can make a big change there and you want to get this back to 0 0.7 volts at this point and then you want to uh, tighten up those four screws you want to uh, push the uh, gas or the you know the acceleration a little bit go up a couple thousand three thousand oh and the other thing on the system what is also important is you have to adjust this thing here that you have a minute clearance back here so whenever the gas pedal is released and there's no the linkage has to have a free play in here this cannot be so tight that this little uh, guide sits on this plate there should be a gap here this, you know that you when you wiggle on this here that this has a completely free play and there should be a couple millimeters of play in it if this is too tight because this way it will always go back to the fully closed position on your throttle valve that is very very important because if this gets hung up you never get your idle down if you have an idle problem a lot of times it can hang up here so once you have this now all adjusted you got the uh, rough you know pre-calibration setting here you got your potentiometer now at 0.7 volts. Now what you do is you have to shut off the engine and disconnect the battery and leave the battery disconnected for 30 seconds to one minute. And then you reconnect the battery and you start the car. And what this does is it resets the ECU. The ECU goes now into a learning mode for the next 40 starts. Actually, it does it every time you start it, but there's nothing in the RAM, in the, in the operating memory of uh, collected values. And then this is how they're calibrating the correct functioning of the EHA valve and the, um, you know, setting of your idle speed. Uh, idle speed and the uh, mixture control, basically. And uh, this thing will go rough. You will see the engine shake. It's going to shift hard. It's going to do all sorts of weird and bizarre things. Believe me, it will do it. And there's nothing wrong with your engine. There's nothing wrong with the computer. This is what this thing does. It goes between the maximum settings it has on the minimal side and maximal side. And it will figure itself out. But the two important thing is the plate has to be set up correctly through this screw here. So you can start it and it has the correct flow starting point when fuel starts to flow, uh, you know, at the angle position where the plate goes down when it has vacuum from the running engine at idle speed. And that this potentiometer is then exactly uh, at that 750, or you wanna hook up a RPM tester too. So you wanna be somewhere between 650 to 750. Usually it bounces around 700, 720. Uh, that's when your RPM is at 700, 720. You want to make sure that this is 0.7 volts between the top pin and the center pin. Center pin plus, top pin minus. And then when you have that set up, and then you start driving, and in 20 cycles, uh, 40 starts, say like over a couple of weeks, three weeks, the, the computer has enough data and it will smoothen out, and you will have a very, very good running engine. The requirement for this is the switch on the throttle valve has to work. The water temperature sensor has to work. Your oxygen sensor has to work. If you have the California version, your extra exhaust heat sensor has to work, which goes back to the infeed. And the, uh, let me see what else has to work on this one is hooked up there. Um, the sensor for the altitude has to work correctly. You have to check that, and that's about it. Let me see, is there any other sensors hooked up to that thing? No, not from a sensor point. We have the temperature. We got the uh, the potentiometer goes there. The uh, two, uh, the exhaust temperature and the uh, and the oxygen sensor. That is the critical stuff. They have to work. Um, and then the system will balance itself out and you will get the best possible gas mileage under the given circumstances of the condition of your engine. But this way you have basically recalibrated the engine. And I found it the easiest way to do it is with the old fashioned um, analog instruments because they're easier, they are not as bouncy 
and they can show you better they're more stable you know when you go up and down with these voltages they're just easier to read and this engine this entire electronic system was designed for these instruments not for digital meters just said you know so with this thing here with this tester even though it is 40 years old at this point probably 79 yeah 42 years old it still works perfect i set mine up on my car and i got it right in the middle here between 0.65 and 0.75 and um with 12 and a half so that is 62.5 so you're right there uh in the middle and uh what happened then is i put my digital meter on there and it was exactly at 0 0.700 this is how accurate this can get just with this here like i said is i put the links in for the cables for you ebay and the hirschman uh, clamps because they come in pretty good they're not very expensive i can't remember this right now maybe 20 bucks for a set or 30 bucks or something like this i bought two or three sets because they're handy and they you know you can hook this up to all sorts of stuff and it makes testing a lot easier okay so that was it that's how you calibrate it that's how you bleed it you should do these uh, settings on these things every time the car comes out of storage uh, there were any type of repairs done to the uh, fuel injectors, to the fuel lines. Uh, anytime anything, something has to do with fuel, vacuum, uh, or the combination of both, you know. When you change like the heat sensor, that really doesn't make a big difference for the ECU. This one here, in that case, you change the oxygen sensor, not a big deal. You change the heat sensor for the exhaust, not a big deal. You change this potentiometer, very big deal. The other thing is what I would recommend is because of these things, what I found out is I got two bad ones. I bought one and I put that link, I will put that in the link in the description too from Germany for 59 euros or 69 bucks. Excellent quality. Um, really, really good stuff for fifty nine dollars. Beats the Bosch one. It's better, the better than the Bosch one. Some guy over in Germany on eBay sells them. He makes them, or yes, I made for him, and he guarantees them, and they're, they're absolutely uh, outstanding. I put it in. That's how I got to point seven volts, and it is absolutely stable. I mean, you, you wouldn't believe it. And uh, I will put this in. This should be changed every five years. There are certain parts which you just should replace, uh, which I would not wait for them to break or to go bad or to go minimal. I would just change them. And that potentiometer is one of them. If if you can buy a hundred thousand dollar car, you ought to be able to buy a sensor for sixty nine dollars every five years or every three years. This will save you a lot of headaches because a lot of the rough idling and bumping and stuttering and everything else comes from this here when that potentiometer has that little dent in the track from sitting there from the wiper like i had shown in the other videos and that will save you a lot of headaches a lot of headaches and other issues and failures and engine stresses and this then and the other thing so utilize the links um and i hope you get something out of it if you have any questions or you have any ideas just um, write a comment and ask uh, otherwise just give us a like if you like it a thumbs up and if you want to subscribe subscribe and ring the bell and then we will let you know when we make another video have a good night